Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, today we're going to talk about one of the most dangerous defensive moves out there, and that's uh, protecting yourself, trying to take away an attacker's gun. Yes, we're going to talk about that. Rather than me showing you different moves that you won't be able to use, uh, and, and you can actually go view them uh, all over YouTube, just uh, look them up, you know, gun takeaways, and, and you'll see a lot of different styles. But what I want to talk about, which is even more important than the takeaway, it is the risk that you take beforehand. And, and this is part of the planning uh, process. Um, and, and there's different uh, uh, time limits that you, you have with different types of guns. And, and uh, I'm an FFL, meaning I'm a federal firearms license uh, dealer that buys, sells, trades, uh, weapons, uh, registers weapons, and, and uh, I know a lot about guns. I've, I've done some gunsmithing. I've done uh, uh, <laughs> reloading of uh, uh, precise, precision uh, ammunition. So uh, I have a lot of experience on that. But uh, what I want to talk about is uh, the takeaway. And, and uh, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of practice on taking away. In fact, one of my last takeaways was back in 2018 when um, a person brought this thug over and was trying to intimidate me uh, with this person. Uh, and the person who brought this thug over uh, knew that I was armed and also told him that I'm armed. But I don't carry a really large weapon because I usually don't need a weapon in most cases. But that's the setup. So the person comes over. Then all of a sudden, this, uh, uh, he brings this thug in, and I'm already reading his vibe <laughs> through uh, my uh, chi energy reading, and, and I know that he's a bad guy, and I know that he has intent on uh, trying to harm me, hurt me, and I knew that he had a gun on him because I could see it uh, through his shirt. Not so much seeing the gun, but I could see the imprint uh, of the gun, and this is part of uh, being a gun expert and also a martial arts expert uh, and, and knowing what to look for. And so this is what I, I knew what to look for. When he started uh, talking and he says, I know you, you're armed, let me show you mine. And, and he said it with an attitude. Uh, and so as soon as he, he reached for it and, and the gun cleared his, uh, his uh, waistband, I had snatched it and, and taken it away from him before anything could uh, transpire. I also unloaded that weapon right in front of him with one still in the chamber so that he knew that uh, he's still in trouble and, and the person that brought him along with them to intimidate me. So long story short, they did get the gun back, but not in one piece. It, uh, I gave it back to them fully disassembled because uh, uh, I know what to do. Uh, and anyway, that gun was a Glock 19 and, and that's one of the more dangerous versions because there are no ways to really foul that gun uh, beforehand um, before it fires. Whereas on a revolver a pist and pistols, there if it has a hammer, that is the point that you want to uh, inject a finger so that the hammer cannot touch the firing pin. Uh, and with the uh, revolver, the other thing that you need to look at uh, with the gun, not only number one, identifying the gun, number two, that it's loaded in a revolver. It's real easy to see that it's uh, loaded with the cylinder and you can see the actual bullets uh, on, on that. And then the weak part of uh, that uh, revolver is that it has to ha have the hammer cocked uh, for uh, speedy uh, uh, firing. Or they can do a double action pull, which takes a substantial amount of uh, pressure on the trigger, approximately 12 to 16 pounds of pressure 
from the trigger finger. So what that does, let me tell you, that buys you three seconds, maximum of three seconds from the time that you launch your um, counter ambush to the time that the gun is likely to go off. And with a revolver, there's a lot of different ways you can foul the action. Number one, by grabbing the top uh, the frame and holding the cylinder. Because if the cylinder can't move, he can't pull the, the hammer back either because they, when the hammer comes back, the cylinder rolls at the same time. It's a timing. And so you're throwing off the timing of a revolver. So you can actually uh, prevent a, a revolver from firing at all. And in the same movement, uh, give the push, pull, and yank meaning the push-pull is the push is the hand to move the barrel away from you and grab the frame or the slide. If it's a pistol, you'll want to grab the slide and then also inject either a thumb into the uh, firing area, the hammer. If the hammer is back, you want that, that thumb in between the hammer and that pin. If the hammer is not back, that's to your advantage because now you control that gun. All you have to do is get that thumb wrapped around the hammer. The hammer cannot come back with a trigger pull when you have your hand fouling the rotation of the cylinder and also your thumb locking the uh, hammer uh, in the uh, down position. And gives you the, the ripping power to pull it away. So revolvers are real easy. Uh, and and I, I remember a time when I was really young, I was 20 years old, I was held up at gunpoint while I was a, an assistant manager for uh, Grand Auto. And this happened in the uh, Oakland Rockridge store, which was at 51st and Pleasant Valley. Person came in, he stuck a gun in, in my ribs and said, give me everything in, the safe and, and I look down and I, I see the gun and I look at the person and I'm like really and he hands me a bag says now and, and I had every opportunity because number one the first thing I did was I verified it was a 38 special number two all the cylinders had uh, something in it meaning that uh, live rounds were in uh, the cylinder but number three was his mistake and it could have been his, his downfall was that he didn't have the hammer pulled back. He didn't have the hammer cocked. He had it closed and pointing it at me. I had the opportunity if Grand Auto didn't have such stringent rules about robberies and, and the managers had to comply with these, otherwise you lost your job. Uh, I could have easily taken this person and, and mopped the floor with him. He's, he was an amateur. He had the uh, hammer down. He didn't have it cocked. Uh, and he was just using the gun as an intimidation uh, tool. But the thing is, like I said, I could have mopped the floor with him. But because of uh, the uh, loss prevention policy of the retailer, and that's why I left retail, uh, because they don't give a crap about you and your life, is that the robber go ahead and shoot you. They don't care. They got a life insurance policy, which compensates grand auto. It doesn't compensate your family, but it compensates grand auto for the loss and the mess uh, of that uh, murder. Um, but I would have lost my job. If I had fought and resisted uh, the uh, robber at any time, grand auto would have automatically fired me back then. And they told me. And they they uh, said, we're glad that you didn't resist. I said, yeah, I could have mopped the floor with them and, and we could, and Grand Auto wouldn't have had any loss, but I wouldn't have had a job. And they, they told me that, yeah, you would automatically have lost your job for doing that because you went against company policy. So uh, that was my experience with that. And that's why I never worked uh, retail ever again. And I never will uh, because the retailer doesn't give a crap about you. Uh, and then we come to the pistol. Okay, pistols are a very different uh, situation. Uh, and the verifications are uh, 
slightly different. The verification on a pistol, number one, you should be able to see into the barrel. You should see chrome on the end of the barrel and some rifling. You should be able to visibly see that from at least five feet, six feet away. The other thing you want to verify is that there's a, a clip, a magazine in the uh, bottom of the handle of the weapon. How you can see that, even with the, the gun pointed at you, you can still see the base plate of most magazines uh, for, uh, for the pistols. So that's the second thing that I look for. Or the other thing, if you're really good like me, I can actually tell the difference between a gun that has a magazine in it and a gun that does not just by the way that the slide sounds when it snaps closed I can tell by the sound whether you have a magazine in there and if it has rounds or not and that's the most important thing uh, once you verify the, the barrel you have no way of uh, verifying that there are rounds in that uh, um, pistol but the other things that you need to also quickly look for is the gun in full battery, meaning that it's in a close, uh, completely closed position. It doesn't look uh, like it's out of, uh, nothing's out of place, and it looks like it's ready to rock and roll. Uh, because there's times when uh, a person can uh, pull that weapon out, and it could actually be fouled from, and they didn't know it. And the action, uh, the slide isn't completely closed. You'll see a, an air gap. Uh, if you see an air gap in there, take advantage of that because the gun is out of battery and you can actually fight that person for as long as you need if the gun is out of battery. Or if the gun, the hammer is again, not cocked. That's an area that you can foul and prevent that gun from ever firing long as you keep uh, a finger or a thumb wrapped around that hammer and the slide and while you, you uh, wrestle for that. One of the things that you need to remember is that if you let go of that gun for any reason or you lose the grip, you are dead. That is guaranteed because uh, if you get into a struggle uh, for the weapon uh, against a criminal, they will 100% shoot you once they regain the weapon. And 98% of the times, uh, you're going to die. 2% of the times, you may live through there uh, if they don't follow up with multi-shots. So that's what I want to talk about today. And, and hopefully that helps you decide whether you are going to work on disarming a criminal or not. I've disarmed uh, plenty of criminals. Like I said, my last one was in 2018 where... Uh, the thug tried to, uh, a person brought a thug over to intimidate me, which didn't work. I actually scared them and, and they never been back. And that person that brought the thug has not ever come back and, and uh, get in my face or even come within two blocks of me from what I, I've heard from people because they have seen him in, in the neighborhood, but he doesn't come anywhere near me because he knows, you know, he made a, a very big mistake by bringing that person to uh, intimidate or even try and shoot me. But uh, hopefully that helps you uh, think more about disarming a criminal, unless you have extensive knowledge and, and uh, hundreds of hours of practice. Don't do it. It's not worth the risk. Uh, I, I have known people that have done it, and it always ends up in a, in a bad outcome if you don't have the experience. You need to actually uh, practice and train taking guns away, different types of guns, revolvers, pistols, striker fire pistols. So those are all things that have to be considered, and each one has its own uh, different and unique uh, ways of fouling and putting the gun out of battery. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.